Hi and welcome everybody to a new episode of Meeting with Changemakers. This time I have the chance to talk to Jo Hendricks. She has been working with hotels for long years and now she's working with hotels to reduce their plastic footprint and also they work on food waste. So she's been doing that quite successfully for the last years. Now they're even expanding. So she has lots of tips and tricks on how to reduce the plastic footprint within hotels and in tourism. So stay tuned and get some insights. Welcome everybody to the next show of Meeting with Changemakers. Today I have this pleasure to talk to Joe Hendricks from Gran Canaria. Hi Joe, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And yeah, I'm excited to talk about Traveling Without Plastic, which is a company that Joe is having and initiatives that you are dealing with. But before we talk about the details, I would like to uh, get to know you a little bit more. Maybe you can introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit what brought you into sustainability and why are you so passionate about it? Yeah, sure. So um, I've worked in the travel industry since 1997. So I was first a holiday representative. Uh, that was back in the days of air tours for anybody that knows the UK travel market. And uh, I moved around from, from various places. I got an office manager's role. I moved into a health and safety role, uh, which is what brought me to Gran Canaria in the beginning. So that was um, looking after the hotels and El ensuring that they met with the tour operator expectations for health and safety. And from there, it was in 2007, actually, when everybody that was responsible for health and safety audits also became responsible for doing sustainability audits in the hotels. And that was the travel life system for accommodations. It's still running today. So having auditor experience, that meant that we would be the people that would go and do the sustainability audits. And that's something really caught my attention to really start thinking right look at the impacts actually that hotels are having not just on the environment and the resource use but the people the staff and I just got really really excited about it and then we actually got the opportunity um, again a lot of us that were in the auditing roles to do um, a couple of modules on responsible tourism management it was with Harold Goodwin and Leeds University at the time so I volunteered to do those. So I was accepted to do those, but they were just like practice modules. And after two modules, it finished. And I was like, oh no, what else can we do? So actually I got accepted onto the full course. I had an interview with Harold um, and he accepted me on the course distance learning while I was still based in Gran Canaria. And it sort of all started there and then never looked back. And I was very lucky that within um, Thomas Cook then, as it was at the time, they merged together with My Travel, which created a, a CSR department, a much bigger CSR department. And there was an opportunity then to take a role, or it was advertised, um, to take a role as the sustainable destinations manager. Um, so I applied for that um, and very, very luckily got that role and then moved back to the UK um, to to work from a, a, the corporate offices in, in Peterborough and Manchester and I guess the rest is the rest is history. <laughs> There's still more to tell, but so I'm yeah moved into it very much from being in the industry anyway and seeing that the impacts weren't always positive, and then being given the opportunity to do something about it. Now let's uh, hold on there for a moment. Maybe from your side, as an expert in the sustainability hospitality industry, basically, for you, what is sustainable hotelery? You no, know? what is what makes you for you a, a sustainable hotel? I think for me, it's hotels that really understand their impact and are proactively and really from the heart wanting to do something about it and taking steps to do something about it. So not just necessarily doing it because it's expected or it's a tick box exercise. You can tell the hotels that have really got sustainability in their DNA you know, when you talk to them, when you talk to different members of the team in different operational areas, if it's really coming through and it's flooded through from top down and everybody believes in it, you can tell through the conversations that you have. And that's where I think, I mean, you know, no operation can be fully sustainable, can it? We're going to have an impact whatever we do. It's, you know, we can't get away from that. But the ones that really mean it, I think, are the ones that will be able to better face challenges. If they hit a roadblock, they're not going to be the kind of hotel management team that would say, oh, it's really impossible because they're the sort of people that would say, right, how do we get over that? How can we overcome this challenge? What can we do? Or what's the best case scenario we can get from this? So I think that for me, it's really the, the people 
in the hotel and the way that they approach sustainability that would make me feel if they really are doing the best that they can or not. Interesting. That actually raises another question from me because before you'd mentioned that you were into compliance and auditing. And now actually the EU is making yeah sustainability reporting obligatory. So some companies already have to be complying with that. And my question is, do you see maybe even as a problem if companies just have to, because you mentioned just ticking off the box and compliance many times just ticking off boxes, but not really implementing changes, not changing the DNA that you mentioned. So do you see it as a, maybe also as a challenge that is now made compliance? I think it can be. I mean, I think if you, got to meet standards for some reason and perhaps you weren't interested in meeting standards before but now it's legislated then there's still go changes are still going to come from that because whoever is going to I'd hope anyway whoever's going to check that hotel or inspect that hotel are going to need to see that changes have happened and, and plans are in place so I think it will move the needle um, but I, personally I would just like to think that people are doing it because they understand that it makes business sense they understand it's actually the best thing to do on so many levels and yes if they do it to tick a box and it gets some results and it reduces consumption and it reduces resource use and it makes things better for staff or it engages them more with the community brilliant but it we get much more impact much more quickly if everybody is on board and really wants to do it so at It's, I don't see it as a major negative, um, but there's also as well, I speak to some hoteliers and some of the, some of the legislation, some of the reporting is, is quite arduous. It's quite difficult, especially for smaller hotels. I know that they, you know, a lot of them need a lot of help with that. And it can be, I've had um, quite a few accounts where you can spend so much time actually doing the report that you're not then actually taking the actions. I don't think that's an excuse for not taking the actions. I think you need to re-establish maybe the roles and your staff, who's doing what, uh, what kinds of things can you alleviate perhaps from, from some members of staff so that they can do the actions. So I think you need to think around it because you can't get away from it. So I don't see it as a as an excuse, but I do understand why when hotels haven't had to do it before, it's this massive extra burden and, and they just need some help getting through that and then maybe putting in some new procedures in place so they can continue to do actions and report on them. So I assume you're helping exactly those hotels, but before I, I want to dive into that a bit more, um, talking about sustainability of a hotel and tourism in general, might, one might think, no, that is mainly the CO2 footprint, maybe associated with flying, for example, to Gran Canaria, which definitely has a huge CO2 individual footprint. Um, but you are focusing more on plastic reduction and waste management. So what brought you into that specific field? Was it some kind of event that you thought, oh, the ocean is full of plastic, I can't stand that, or just the amount of plastic that you had to deal with every day? What is specifically brought to say traveling without plastic? It's um, I actually worked on a plastic reduction project with the Travel Foundation in Cyprus, 26 hotels back in 2011 can you believe so before anybody was really talking about plastic so well ahead of the curve uh, in terms of that project but it wasn't till 2017 that I founded without travel um, founded travel without plastic and that was an event because I was doing some um, some other auditing not um, plastic but um, animal welfare auditing at the time in the states and some of the Caribbean islands and every single hotel we stayed in apart from one eat just at breakfast everything was single use the bowls they were polystyrene it was disgusting to, i mean to eat your cereal out of a polystyrene bowl with a plastic spoon i nearly dropped dead i just couldn't believe it and on the first day we where we actually stayed we were in apartments and they had kitchens in the apartments and they were fully equipped so the second day i brought my own bowl my own plate my own cutlery down my own um cup and everybody was looking at me thinking uh, but I actually heard some people say look at that girl you know we should do that because this is really terrible all this waste and then others thinking what's this mad English woman doing uh, but I couldn't stand it I just couldn't stand to be part of it and when I asked the teams like, like not to complain but you know just to say to the hotel why would that be your first choice to offer that I just want to understand why 
So it was quite interesting in that particular hotel. They didn't even have a kitchen. So they couldn't prepare any of the food on site. So it was even worse probably in the back because everything was coming in pre-packaged and we just didn't even see that on the front side. So half of me was sorry I'd asked. Um, but then I just started to get stories about why they can't or the problems. And I thought, right, we've done this before. I've done this before in, in 2011. It was actually, you know, easy enough to get some changes once we understood what the problems were. So I thought, this is it. I, I know we can change it. There's got to be a better way than this. And so I only had half an hour before I needed to go out and do the the audits that we were there for. So I made a Facebook page. Because I just, I needed to do something and I didn't know what else to do in half an hour. So it was like, right, Facebook page, travel without plastic. I think we can do this. Who thinks this is a good idea? Kind of create and off I went and came back and almost forgot about it, to be honest. Um, but when I came back in, my little Facebook tag thing was like, yeah, this has happened. That's happened. And so many people said this is a brilliant idea. Um, one of my friends that still worked at a, a tour operator with hotels said, actually, we know what you've done in Cyprus. We could do with a like a little kit or something. Could you help us put that together? So that happened. Um, that sort of became knowledge. And another hotel company asked me for a kit and to sort of personalize it. So they sent me their entire list of plastic products, which was long. Um, and then we went through them one by one laboriously to see what they could change them to, what the pros and cons of those different changes would be, because not everything is as green as it seems when it comes to making changes. And so with no plan, no strategy, <laughs> no business plan or whatever, it just kind of took off and we became quite well known. And I think because of the the background in health and safety and, and quality assurance, which I used to do at Thomas Cook, I could make sure that whatever suggestions we were we were giving to hotels, they would still tick the health and safety box. They'd still, uh, uh, you know, comply with quality assurance. It wouldn't impact the guest experience, but you could get the sustainability benefit. You could reduce the waste, etc. Uh, so I think that's what made it work because we've just got such practical insight into what hotels need what challenges they're facing different types of hotels and you know what the customer demographic is where you're situated what your waste infrastructure is all of those things we were able to think about and and bring together in the suggestions and from there it just kind of it took off and we haven't looked back so one question do you really do you think that the hotel industry is like in so quote, easy case to work with because there are some standardized processes. You could say that you, you invent one solution for the plastic problem and you can apply it to just more than one hotel. So is it like transferable or is every case so different that you uh, have to do a completely different approach? No, a lot of it's transferable, to be honest. They're, they're, I mean, the basics are anyway. So you might need to tweak things a little bit depending on where the hotel is situated or the type of customer demographic that they have. One of the hardest things to do with the larger hotel chains is to overcome the brand standards. So a lot of brand standards have been implemented for what the past 20 or 30 years, which is when it was, let's put all the miniature amenities into the bathroom. Let's start putting bottled water into hotel rooms and all of those things that were designed to um, make the guest experience better. But if we look at them now with a with a sort of waste lens on, we think, gosh, you know, these are the things that are actually causing a lot of waste, but they're they're so embedded, they're so ingrained that actually changing that habit and changing the standards is probably one of the biggest challenges that we need to help hotels overcome. So once we we have a certain way that we'll work with larger hotel chains in a workshop and having lots of people that are in decision making roles um, around the table to try and identify where has where this come from? And usually my biggest my biggest question to them that helps them to think is to say, right, imagine that the powers that be said to you tomorrow, right, brand standards have got to change. We're changing them and we have got to put waste reduction at the heart of the brand standard. What do we need to change? Even if, you know, let's take away, maybe that's never going to happen. Maybe nobody's ever going to say that to you. But if you think with that mindset, you'd start to say, right, amenities, bottled water, stairs, everything that there's a reusable alternative for, could easily be taken out of the brand standards if somebody in the chain has got the will to make it happen. So nine times out of 10, we'll hear, 
we can't change it because it's a brand standard. And I'm like, actually, that's the one thing that you can do mm-hmm. because somebody somewhere in your business can change it. It's not law. It's not legislation. You can actually make the change if you want to. And so it's getting to that. And then you see people go, oh, you know, they're right about that. You got me there, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, how can you do it? So it's, yeah. And, and and a lot of the time now we're seeing that people are able to think past that. Um, there's a lot of sort of newer and, and younger managers coming into to roles in hotels that, that really want to be able to make these changes. And you just look back and you think it's an old habit and habits are hard to break. It's hard to put in new changes. A lot of people don't like change. But we're going to have to push this through. And some of it's going to be legislated. We might as well get on board with it before that, because it's very hard to do when the legislators come in if you haven't got the buy-in from the rest of the staff. So how do we make that work? So that's a big part of the of the role. So technically, there's a lot that's transferable and just needs to be tweaked, but it's overcoming the, the habit. Okay. So let us uh, talk about maybe the hot spots of a hotel when it comes to creating waste, something I would be interested to know. Um, so where would you think are the most wasteful processes in a hotel and where maybe it's also the easiest to change something to have with a little, like 80-20, no? with a little effort, have the biggest result, something economists always want to know. So <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe you can talk about that a little bit. I think, well, in tech, there's lots of waste in loads of departments of hotels but from a plastic perspective uh, we normally find it uh, food and beverage and and guest rooms in general so um, the the amenities thing is a big um, is obviously a big contributor to plastic I know that the EU are now thinking about banning the small miniature shampoos and shower gels and stuff but there's I haven't seen anything about banning dry amenities so you know like you'd go into a hotel and you'll get a little packet of earbuds and there's just two earbuds in there or there's a two cotton rounds or there's all these other things that go with it a plastic comb that sort of thing I haven't seen anything about those um, being banned but there's a lot there that if you speak to a hotel manager they might say but the guests love them because they take them home but if you go to my mum and dad's house you will find like 35 years worth of little miniature plastic bottles and plastic combs that they swipe from the hotel and they take home and they never use. They're sitting in the drawer. And one of these days, it's going to come down to me and my sister to have to clear it all out. You know, So people don't really want them because they're going to use them. They want them as a little memento or a reminder of their holiday. And you could do that very differently and you could cut out the waste. So uh, there's a lot that you can do there. Even when it comes again to brand standards and people are a little bit scared about taking them out completely, eliminating them completely. Even if you make these things available on request, it's surprising how when the customer's got to make a little bit of effort, they don't really want to make that effort to go and get two earbuds that they've probably traveled with anyway. You know, if they've forgotten their toothpaste, they might come down to the reception and say, do you have any? It doesn't mean you need to have it in a miniature format. You could still have it in a domestic size format and, They take it home if they've not traveled with hand luggage. So there's, it's really looking at, um, I guess, uh, where this is what we get people to do. Where is the most waste happening in your hotel? So if possible, make a list of the plastic items that you use and either go back and look at your invoices and see how many of them you're getting through. Because when each housekeeper or each food and beverage person is just put in you know, one straw in a drink or one miniature bottle into a room. It doesn't seem a lot. But when you actually present them with all of that over the course of a month, maybe, and this is something we try to get the hotels to do if we work with them in person, we say, right, out of your storeroom, bring everything that's a month's worth of your consumption. And when they come in and they see that on a table, it's like, whoa, you know, because maybe the housekeeper's looking after 12 rooms. But there is there's 25 housekeepers and you don't realize how much you're getting through. So when you see that visually, you think, oh, that's a lot. OK, we need to do something about that. So try and and, and help them to visualize, you know, the impact that we can have um, and looking then at what are the procedures that need to be in place to help you to design out any waste in the first place so what can you eliminate what is completely unnecessary so we still go to hotels it's shocking they've still got that little plastic thing over the toilet that tells you the toilet is clean you're like really you know people expect a clean toilet 
I expect you to have cleaned the toilet. You've cleaned the bed. You haven't put a big strip over the bed or over the television or over the taps, which is where more people are going to touch things. You know, if you clean the taps, I'm, I'm te- so why have we got this obsession with the toilet? So just take them away. You know, we don't need it. So there's all of these things like what do you actually need um, and, and what is adding value and what is really necessary? So eliminate the things that you don't need and then try and, you know, play about with it a little bit. We did with um, with Futuris in the, the Plastic Free Holidays in Mallorca, which was a project that finished at the end of last year. And we got some really good results with. But the very, very beginning, a lot of hotel managers were scared to remove slippers because they were, you know, people will complain. So there's no slippers, they'll complain. So if you tourists ran um, a short questionnaire with, with not masses of people, they went around a, um, a couple of hotels and asked for questions. Over 80% of the customers said, we don't want slippers. We don't need slippers. We're not interested in the slippers. I mean, if you look at the slippers, they're usually quite crap quality. You know, they're all one size. So you can't really fit in them. They're not even safe because you slide all over the place. If you've got them on in the bathroom with the water, why would you want to wear them? take them out you know but we can't people will complain try it so one of the things and I know I'm going on here but one of the things that annoys me is when people say people will complain like no 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 we're, we're assuming that let's do it and let's see if people actually complain because maybe they won't and maybe it's how you've talked about it or haven't talked about it maybe it's the communications that you've used maybe they're not hitting the spot so don't don't always fall at the first hurdle. If people do co- complain, maybe add a communication in a nice way about why you're doing this, the positive impact of doing it. But don't just assume it's because people want the crap slippers because nine times out of 10, they, you know, if you really ask them, they don't, they'd rather have something better in the room. Um, so it's, yeah, definitely from guest rooms and food and beverage, just thinking it through in a different way, putting some new procedures in place, which we help a lot of people to do so that everything's clean, hygienic, you know, meets all the expectations of, of tour operators and legislation, but it still gives the guest a great experience. And it is a bit of change, but we've got to change. We can't just keep going. We're going to have to change if we want to make some impact. Yeah, most definitely. And I also wanted to uh, yeah, talk about another type of waste, which has maybe not to do with plastic, but I know you also dig deep into the food waste um, problem, basically, because a lot of hotels, they produce a lot of food. And I know that you also have solutions for that. Is that correct? Yes. Well, more my husband. So my husband is very focused on, on uh, food waste prevention. Uh, so he works together with an organization called Light Blue Consulting that are based in um, Thailand. Uh, and they've got some fantastic and really easy to use um, uh, platforms, which, you know, you just put into a mobile phone or a tablet. But it really helps to understand where exactly is food waste coming from in the kitchen. Now, a lot of a lot of hotels would tell us it's the customers wasting food at the buffet. But actually, when if you record it properly and you really take the waste from all of the different areas, you'll see that most of it is happening before it even gets onto the customer's plate, whether it's, you know, in a in an a la carte restaurant or on a buffet. So the great thing about that is called the FIT system, which is like food intel technology. Uh, it's really quite affordable, which is great because some of the solutions are quite expensive and hotels can't always afford that. But the idea is that you weigh the waste from each different area of the kitchen. So you can get preparation waste, you can get spoilage waste, for instance, and you can even, you can separate it out. So most kitchens should anyway have separate preparation areas for meat, fish, etc., to avoid cross-contamination. So in each of those, there's a bin. So all the staff have to do because the, the hotel managers will panic and go, oh, my God, that you want them to weigh everything now. How much longer is that going to take? And like, well, not a lot, really, because they're going to put the stuff in the bin anyway. And they're going to take it to the to the other bin outside, to the main bin. So all you need to do at that point is get the bag. It goes on the scale. You go in, you go, it was breakfast. It was bread. It was this kilos gone. So it's only a couple of extra steps. But the information that you get from that, so you could say, why are we throwing so much bread out on a Tuesday? What's going on? 
you could start to make changes. So that also brings your costs down, which obviously people want to hear. But not only that, the Fit system is brilliant because it will give you, and you were mentioning before, your, your carbon footprint. It will show you the carbon equivalent of what you're saving. Now, that's really important. And hotels need to talk about that a lot more. And they are going to have to report on that. So you want to have systems in place that make that easy. You could do it on an Excel sheet. You could do it on a paperwork sheet, but it's not then as easy to kind of download the, you know, a monthly report where it's all done for you and it works it all out, which is why I really love that system. And then obviously you're still going to have waste. You don't become a, a zero waste kitchen overnight. There's always going to be spoilage, um, you know, and there's, there's always going to be other waste. Um, but if you've done everything you can to reduce it as much as you possibly can, then the other thing that my husband works with is anaerobic digestion. So most people will say, oh, compost and compost is brilliant. Uh, and he does work with composting machines that are sort of industrial. So it's not an open plan where you need a lot of space in the hotel. Um, but you don't necessarily get a, a big return on investment from that. So where the hotels are struggling at the moment is generally with energy bills. Now, the good thing about anaerobic digestion is that waste literally converts itself into uh, biogas and you can plug that or straight into the kitchen or you can link it to a generator. So it will generate electricity, for example. And then the, the waste product, if you like, of biogas is actually an amazing fertilizer. So if you've got gardens, if you want to use it as part of your corporate sustainability um, or corporate responsibility and donate that to, to local Canarian farmers so that they're not having to rely on chemical fertilizers and imported fertilizers, you start to see how you can really make waste prevention or using waste a much wider part of your corporate responsibility program and it's got social benefits and economic benefits and that's where you think right this is really interesting this is why we need to be thinking more circular we need to be looking for these innovative solutions and we need to be kind of welcoming them with open arms rather than being scared of them and again saying oh but we've never done that before I'm like no imagine though if you check imagine turning it around and that you'd always had a, a biodigester and then somebody coming to you and saying, oh, well, actually, we'll unplug that. And we think you should just send all your food waste to, to landfill and then it can become methane and it's going to make the air really toxic and we're going to have terrible climate change. You'd be like, sure, not going to do that. So do you know when you like turn it around, you just say it's, it's, it's different, but look at the benefit from it. What would you rather do? And what makes more sense if you were kind of presented with changes you know doing it that way forever and someone saying let's go make it worse or doing it this way and somebody saying let's make it better why would you not want to make it better and, and save money and, and tick your greenhouse gas emissions at the same time yeah i mean the circularity aspect is super interesting what you just mentioned i just had to think of ecosystems now that there's no waste in an ecosystem <laughs> everything is recycled and recircled um But that's a whole different story. Uh, so <laughs> what I'm interested in now is like maybe the difference between big hotels and small hotels when it comes to working with them. Because I imagine like you mentioned Thomas Cook, I think of TUI, I think of other big chains that we have here. And they have big hotels. They have thousands of tourists coming every month. So what challenges do they face in particular? And then compare maybe to small hotels where... I think it could be even easier to make it sustainable. You have a little sustainable brand. You have a little sustainable bed and breakfast. You're already going into the niche. It sounds kind of easier. Uh, and the change maybe for me sounds bigger for a big change. So how how would you uh, yeah, evaluate that small against big hotels? Yeah, it's an interesting question. I think for so the larger ones we've already touched on. It's 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 like trying to you know turn a cruise ship around on a. 10 pence piece isn't that's going to take a long time to do if you've got a speedboat because you're little you're going to whiz around you can make the change quickly it's it's very much dependent whether it's a large or a small hotel what the management culture is so there can be small hotels that actually are not going to make changes or willing to make changes either but if they wanted to they can make the decision like you know at the click of a finger because they don't have to go via central offices or get some kind of authorization from elsewhere i think it also depends on the ownership model so if the if the hotel management or the hotel manager owns the hotel and they they can make the decisions on the infrastructure in the hotel or any big changes that are needed that need the finance 
then they can make those decisions quickly. And if they've got money behind them, they can do it. But a lot of hotel managers have got to report to the owner and it's the owners that need to make those changes. And that can be quite problematic when it comes to changing the infrastructure of the hotel. So even if it's an independent hotel, for instance, with the food waste, it might still need some new piping or new things that need to be done. And it's not necessarily the hotel manager's decision. So I think you can make the decisions much quicker, uh, much more quickly. I think they can also they can go and find local suppliers because they don't need quite so much of the alternative products to plastic. So they're not in this position where if you go to a certain branded hotel, everything in the room is the same, whether you're in Spain or Italy or the Caribbean or whatever it might be. It, it looks the same because that's what people have come to expect. Yes, there may be different suppliers in those areas, but generally you still need a huge supply of the of the products that you're using. And so you've got to work with certain suppliers to be able to achieve that, whereas the smaller hotels could be quite funky, quite independent. They could change their supply chain whenever they wanted to and and they can update very quickly uh, but again it's all really down to that mindset but the difficult thing I think for smaller hotels is there's so much greenwash out there isn't there there's so much um you know if you see something's bio the word bio everybody thinks oh fantastic it's bio it's going to be better you know and that's not necessarily the case you know natural oh fabulous you know arsenic is natural but if you you know if you taking arsenic you're dead it's going to kill you not everything that's natural is really very good for you but you straight away you see a brown package you know with a green leaf on it and you think right brilliant that's the answer to everything and actually it's, it's not necessarily but you can be when you don't have a lot of time and you don't have a lot of resource it can be very easy to be swayed by some of the marketing so really if we work with smaller hotels and, and the larger ones with the procurement teams was that go beyond those labels, ask a bit more about where's this product coming from? How do I actually dispose of it? I am in this destination with this waste infrastructure. Is your product suitable for my waste infrastructure? Because what happened here, and it, I was, oh, it made me so upset because I went into a few hotels it's a, a couple of years ago now, and they were so excited. And they were like, look at these new plastic cups we've got. They're not plastic. And that they were made from a from a bioplastic, from a PLA that needs industrial composting. And we don't have that. And then the problem was they look so like plastic that all the customers were putting them into the plastic recycling bin. So then that's contaminating the plastic recycling bin. It's like, oh, and it cost them more money. They were more expensive per unit, not by much. But when you looked at how much they were buying, so they had now got rid of fossil fuel plastic bought a different type of plastic that they now actually can't get rid of and it technically needed to go into the general waste bin which means landfill or incineration and they were paying more for it and they were so disappointed but the plastic class has a little green leaf on you know i'm bio i'm this the customers thought it was great and it was, when they come rushing to me and i just thought oh no it's um it's one problem solved and another problem created because we want to do the right thing and that's the thing that's sad they want to do the right thing but it's they don't necessarily it's not their fault have the time or the knowledge or whatever it is to be able to go and research those changes in the depth that requires and then the you know they find themselves with all this excess stock of stuff and you don't just want to chuck it away without using it either so it's it's difficult. And so if you're a smaller hotel, you don't have that maybe central team to be able to call on to say, right, what do you think about this? And so that's a it's part of like the services that we offer. Come to us, tell us what people are coming to you with. We'll tell you what questions to go back to the supplier with. And then you can make an informed decision and decide if it's best for you or not in your circumstances. So where there's a will, there's always a way basically to, <laughs> to round that up. Um so talking about the will, if you have the will to change and you say, okay, I want to change now, what would you recommend how to make a roadmap for a hotel to sustainability? I guess you start with diagnostics, but where do you go from there? And maybe how would you run diagnostics? You mentioned an app that you use, but maybe there's other tools that hotel owners can use to start measuring where am I and then where do we go from here? Yeah, I mean, there's loads and loads of tools out there, isn't there? And I think in, you know, in those ways, um, certification, you know, no matter what people might think of certification, I know there's, um, you know, different views on that, but I think it really helps 
to understand the status quo. So to go through, so if you take the Travel Life um, questionnaire as an example, because it's got environmental and social questions, it's really very balanced in terms of, of um, sustainability questions. You get an idea of where you're at. And then I think what you need to consider as a as a hotel manager or as a hotel group or whatever, or what are the real material issues in your destination? So for instance, here in the Canaries, you know, our, one of our big issues is water because we don't have fresh water sources. So um, you've also got to think about energy use and, and waste and all of the other things. We're importing lots of food. We can get a lot of our fresh vegetables and those sorts of things here, but we're having to import others. So if you think about your specific situation, I mean, okay, which of these could I make better? Which of these could I work on and how could I do that? So there's not, it's not a one size fits all, it, you know, in by any stretch of the imagination, but really kind of doing that baseline exercise, having access to your, if you have to, if you're a small hotel, doing it with your energy bills and your water bills. If you're a bigger hotel and you've got meters or you can see what you're consuming, get that baseline, look at that per guest night and then say, right, what can we do to get that down? And you can do the same thing with how many plastic products are you buying? How much food waste per guest is being produced? So if you kind of manage it all on a on a guest night, I think it helps you to see if you're bringing the the consumption down because if you just look at overall consumption for example you you know it's going to be higher in july and august possibly because you've got more customers but if you might see when you think things are, are quiet and down in october that actually your consumption of electricity per guest night is high and you think well hang on why is that so there could be a problem somewhere if it was water there could be a leak somewhere so if you only use like total consumption you can't really identify any little areas where you think oh that's not right we need to investigate so get your baseline first do it per guest night and then come together as a team and say right what can we do to make this better what could we do in the short term what do we need to think about some investment for who's going to look into that what subvenciones are there because there's lots of um, if you're in the eu anyway there's lots of um possibility for funding or partial funding for making those changes um, but that needs takes time needs a dedicated person really to to spend some time looking into that and that's where your management culture plays a big difference because if you if you really want to do it you'll spend the time to do it or you'll find the time to do it and then you'll be able to make those changes and to round up do you have some good best practice examples you would like to share with us where you say you have to have a look at those to see what they are doing oh yeah uh, so we've got um what five years in now six years we're going into with, with travel without plastic now so it's been great to be able to look back and say oh look what worked look who did that really well look at the strategies for for success that so many hotels that are doing well seem to have like four specific strategies. Of course, it's that that whole DNA thing and the approach, you know, what are they doing? They really want to do it. They try, they collaborate um, and they really mean that they want to make the change. So with the plastic free holidays um, project that we did with Futurists in the Balearic, so it was in Mallorca and Ibiza, I, the hotels there have, have done some amazing work. So to Magic Life in Ibiza, for example, um, they were able to take out all of their plastic bottles uh, that they were using around the pool and the pool bars, et cetera, and replace those with um, water refill machines. We did some really good messaging and really good communications around that so that the customers understood why we were doing it. That went down really well. Statistics off the top of my head, I can't remember, but the cost savings, I think there was about 20,000 euros or something cost saving as well to the hotel. So not just the plastic because of, you know, the amount that they're paying every every day to be consuming plastic bottles, plus the amount you would be paying to get them taken away to the recycling. And you can you can eliminate all of that. So there was a there was an investment in reusable bottles, but that, you know, it pays for itself very quickly. Um, Universal Beach Hotels in Mallorca, fabulous chain. There was nothing that we suggested to them that they turned around and said, we don't think we'll be able to do it. Every time we made a suggestion, it was like, great, let's try. So they took out miniature sachets of shampoo and conditioner, for example. Not only did they switch them to like a larger bottle, but that bottle would be refilled from a kind of bigger, you know, five litre type thing. But it was from a local 
um, producer of shampoo in Mallorca. And that producer, amazingly, took back their own five litre bottles, took responsibility for their packaging, washed them, recycled them and uh, washed them, sorry, reused them. So if you look at that whole loop, and we, we use the same um, supplier in the Robinson Calasarina, which is also in Mallorca, instead of maybe 2,000, 3,000 sort of domestic size bottles being used, it because those other bottles stayed in circulation, we would have bought plastic waste down to five bottles, five larger bottles, because the Mallorca regulation says after they've been used 30 times like three zero then they have to go into recycling so be having that sort of process that the reduction and the cost savings it would have paid itself back in i think it was less than two years so some really really good examples um we can find some links potentially and share those but on the futuris uh, website we've we've got the examples there and i'm just at the process of putting the whole project report together um so that should be available in a couple of months as well with all the statistics and and information but really good really good thank you so much joe for your time and for sharing your insights on sustainability in the hotel industry whoever wants to reach out to joe and Hamas and marcel i will provide you with the links in the description of the youtube video and the podcast and wherever we post this material thanks so much very valuable information and hopefully meet you real soon again here in Gran Canaria, bringing our own cups and reducing our own footprints. Yeah? Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.